This is Tom Robleski, the political editor of the Staten Island Advance. We're here today with City Council Speaker Christine Quinn. Uh, today, City Council Speaker, possibly a candidate for mayor in 2009. You'll talk a little bit about your thinking on that topic. <laughs> well, uh, you know, right now I'm the Speaker of the City Council, and I have the uh, great job and privilege of continuing to get to be this till uh, the end of 2009. Obviously, term limits are what they are in the City of New York, so uh, what comes after that, uh, at some point I'll figure that out and, and, and let folks know. But today I... Uh, and mostly focused on being Speaker of the City Council, where we have a long list of issues we're working on, you know, things like the future of health care in the City of New York, the future of health care on Staten Island, some very aggressive efforts to try to expand affordable housing in all five boroughs, and obviously we are in the midst of uh, working on the budget for the fiscal year, which starts in July, which is going to be no small undertaking given the very uh, tenuous economic times that we're in. Let's talk about healthcare for just a moment. Uh, Richmond University Medical Center, obviously on a lot of people's minds here on Staten Island. You know, what can you say in terms of what the city might or might not do or in healthcare in general on Staten Island? You know, I think uh, I speak for myself and the whole Staten Island delegation when I say that we are very concerned about the situation at Richmond University Medical Center and also concerned about uh, uh, the access to health care on the island, particularly access to health care for folks on the North Shore of Staten Island. Uh, that's one of the reasons why when I was health committee chair before I was speaker, I worked with Councilmember McMahon and others to uh, make sure the federally qualified health center was created and operating on the North Shore. Now, that health center is terrific, it, it's not enough, which is why so many of us, uh, the city council's delegation, the assembly delegation, the senators from the island are working very hard to do everything we can to help sure Rumsey uh, turns around and is able to not just stay alive, but really be a first-rate hospital for the island. You pick one accomplishment of your term as a speaker so far, I know it's not over yet, but that you, you would point to, uh, even if you do go in front of the voters on a citywide basis and say, this is what I did as speaker and this is what I can do uh, possibly in, in, in a, a higher office. Well, one of the things I am most proud of is that uh, not long after being elected speaker, the police union came to me. And they really pointed out to me that half of the police officers in the city of New York, 18,000 men and women, had out-of-date bulletproof vests. They were state-of-the-art when they got out of the academy. They no longer were. You know, some people think we won't know that if Detective Dylan Stewart had a different vest, he might have been higher in the armpit and he might have might be alive today. Uh, what we did know was that they weren't the best money could buy, and that if we're going to send men and women out into harm's way, we have to do everything we can to make sure they go home at night to their families. So I'm very proud that uh, I was able to work with the mayor and get money put into the police department budget. And now each of those 18,000 men and women uh, have personally measured state-of-the-art bulletproof vests. Speaker, thank you very much for taking thank the you. time. I appreciate it very much. Take care. Thank you. You too.